Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for our next hot topic. We're talking about Nigeria ranking 10th in Africa's most unsafe countries for women. Um, and joining me to have a conversation is Frances Olisa Ogbonaya. She's a broadcast journalist and women in leadership advocate. Good morning, Frances. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's good to be here. Okay, fantastic. So we're talking about Nigeria being um, the 10th most unsafe country, African countries um, for women. First, when you saw this headline, I want to get your initial thoughts on this. Um, do you think it's true? Do you think it isn't? Um, and what has been, you know, your own experience even here in Nigeria? Okay, um, you know, there are tons of reports like that, most times from organizations or from most times from self induced some of reports are self-induced some are also very very genuine reports so when i saw the report i was like i was taking it back a little bit but then i had to look at it critically to see to ascertain especially looking at the countries they placed before us and after us mm -hmm. to actually look at i also look at the factors they have which they considered and i and i begin to say there's some atom of truth to what they're saying for example they mentioned politically targeted violence against women mm -hmm. i think uh, from that axis they also talked about they also mentioned the fact that they looked at the, the the drastic reduction of number of women in politics in national assembly they considered those those facts okay, for them these are the issues and they also looked at issues of education which i do not find very true because mm -hmm. uh, Nigerian women are very, very educated they looked at issues of employment they also looked at issues of um issues of laws and about i, I do not believe believe them when it comes to the laws because nigeria we are not short of laws when it comes to gender-based violence against women we are not short of laws when it comes to domestic violence against women legal state government has a, a law protecting uh, persons against the uh, violence uh and the state government has laws against um, uh, gender-based violence and um, same as uh plateau state most of the major uh, state passed a wonderful law against uh, women domestic violence so um laws i think when it comes to i disagree with them in the area of education employment uh employment though, though, though but then education and laws i think you can agree with them because mm -hmm. laws are not the problems we have in nigeria the problem we have is implementation of those laws but i do agree with them when it comes to politically targeted violence against women i agree with them with the issue of financially induced violence against women i agree with them when it comes to uh domestic violence you know mm -hmm. uh, there are many reports one out of every four women four women in nigeria have suffered domestic violence mm -hmm. are currently suffering domestic violence Ten in africa is is, is is somewhat true 16 in the whole world according to a report by new york a uh, new york based organization is my challenge uh they, they place nigeria 16 out of 166 around 177 countries of the world but mm. um, well, i think it calls for concern for mm. nigeria in africa to be placed alongside countries like south sudan mm. imagine uh, it takes it, Nigerian leaders need to think, women organization needs to think, husbands needs to think. Yeah. The men need to think because most of the violence against women uh, tilt towards men, be, be, towards it being fueled by men. Mm. So uh, that's what I, I think. Okay. So, I mean, you highlighted some factors, the the um, political one, the domestic violence and all of that. Um, I was going to ask, so what are some societal norms that you think threaten the safety of women in Nigeria? Um, you've said, you know, the government needs to look at this. There are laws, um, but still there are some men who, you know, will still be violent towards women, right? So what are some societal yeah. norms that you think just threaten our safety um because there are times that some cultures might even approve of this so what do you think okay uh, yes um there are places where <laughs> my southeast is one of those places you know mm. then the northern part of the country is one of those places where women especially when a woman loses the husband mm. you know uh, the, the violence against widows is just one thing that uh, stealthy governors should be to take very very seriously uh, women are compelled to shave their hairs against yeah. their wish you know all in the name of norms and cultures not forget our customs not for, forget things that customs are meant for man and not man for the custom you understand right. if you tell me it's custom there are some customs that they no longer practice men were supposed to, women were supposed to stay at home why men go for, go to hunt for women now they don't hunt anymore <laughs> if men no longer go to become hunters to fetch 
needs and whatever for the family. Do, why do you still compel women to shave their hair simply because he lost a, a husband? She lost a husband. When their when their wives die, do you compel men to shave their hair? So we want you to do that as a sign of money for a husband. It's, it should be personal. Women are subjected to these norms, and it sometimes it comes with frictions and violences. Then in some places where a widow is, is accused, accusations, you take your husband, and you'll be surprised that well many members of the society will be standing in tandem with those people accusing the woman. So sometimes I get to ask them, why would somebody wake up and kill the husband? For what, you know? Especially <laughs> when children are involved. Is she going to fend for them? So, and that why death can come to anybody. So some of those norms, cultures, are things that need to be looked at. Of course, we're not talking, we're not even going to say anything about the religious factors in the in the in the north nobody wants to talk about them because uh, most of them would might feel offended but then we might we should begin to adjust some of these things if a woman decides that she will cover her hair cover everything for her husband her son women should be, shouldn't be compelled into doing these things women should be allowed to make free choices yeah. those are the remote causes of violence against women Okay, so I want to take it um, to the economic side um, right now. So do you think there are some, you know, w maybe with the economic situation of Nigeria, especially, you know, for vulnerable women in some communities now, do you think that also, um, you know, pose as a threat to women? Because, I mean, there's no money. Most times they have to stay with a man who is violent and you don't have a choice. Um, so do you think that also poses as a factor as well? Okay, and now the truth is that financial issues is one of the major, major challenges. But then, um, uh, we don't have, our society is one that has not always favored women when it comes to economic uh, relevance. In the mm. sense that making money is actually hard. It's most often than not, it's, uh, it's, emo it's emotionally draining. It's uh, energy sapping. And most women uh, spend some of this energy raising children that they might not have time to actually, they might, they might not combine properly. But a woman, a man is saddled only, most often than not, the responsibility of just looking for money. But now, in today, a woman has to expend energy looking for money, just like men. Mm -hmm. They also have to expend energy taking care of the home front. All these things, they, can, they find it hard to balance. And at the end of the day, emotional frustration sets in. And that's where violence begins. The man talks, the woman talks back, and the whole issue begins to start before you know there's a, there's, there's a domestic violence. This is which contributes like 35 percent of this violence against women. Domestic violence, domestic violence. I, a, 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 a research was conducted. About 60 percent of women do not have airtime in their home. You know, most of them have to wait for their husbands. You know, so the society has was not structured in a way to favor women economically, unlike you have in the Western world. Mm. So. Um, it's, it's something that has to take time. It's systemic. Um, you look at number of female graduate, uh, female uh, people that left the uh, were called to bar. Mm -hmm. Look at the number of women there, enormous. But at the end of the day, out of the, in the next thirty years, out of that set, they will need ten, ten Supreme Court justices. Mm -hmm. They will have nine men and one, one woman. woman. Right. It's a situation whereby there was a sixty percent. A 60 percent female females that were called to bar with about just about 40 percent or thereabout but at the end of the day you realize the only thing men get into the uh, top uh, uh, top uh, ca top cadre of their careers and women who contributed to the highest number of the whole thing become at the it keeps staying at the bottom part so these are the issues it's a structural pro pro problem it's a structural problem that i need that i believe that will take time you know systemic hmm. but we'll keep studying education wise we we'll just keep studying, waiting for the right, right policies, the people who will drive the change. And the only way to drive the change, like I said, is only when women begin to apply wonderful positions. Then mm. we make laws that will favor us. Right. So what are some government um, policies or initiatives that you think can be introduced to ensure the safety mm. of women? Because, I mean, government has a big role to play. Fine. I know there are yeah. NGOs, there are, um, you know, people just doing the advocacy to ensure that, you know, mm. women have more education in this. They, they know their rights. Um, they know what they should want. And just like how you're saying it, women need to, um, you know, just look, look for each other, look out for each other and fight for what we want really but 
when the government has to do something, what are things the government can do or initiatives that um, can be put in place to ensure that women are safe in Nigeria? Okay, um, first of all, before we talk about the government, uh, I want to actually admonish and actually call on women, uh, women based organizations to become true to themselves. Mm. They should learn to be consistent with that advocacy. Most of often than not, I am scared and I stand to be quoted. They establish these agencies to make money for themselves. Most of them don't do not genuinely fight for the cause of the women. They go all over the television. Oh, I'm this. before you know, they get all the relevance they want. Get some of these uh, donor agencies, get some money. Before you know, they are living large on women advocates. You understand? Mm. We must be true to ourselves, first of all, when it comes to the agencies, when it comes to the NGOs, before we go to the government. Then going to the government, like I said before now, government is not sort of laws. I'm not asking them to establish laws, because the laws are already there. Now, Sean, uh, Sean Deku, the, his, his vice star wife in Lagos, we are yet to hear. The, my mother's case man, the man from Mary, killed his wife, Osinachi, you yeah. know, and then up to now, they are still, uh, uh, allegedly killed the wife, brother. Just a, it's time to show they allegedly, they are allegedly killed their wives. Mm -hmm. And, um, we keep going back and forth, back and forth on these things. There should be serious and genuine and intentional implementation of the existing laws. There are laws, uh, there are already laws, like I said, there are laws against uh, women, women, women with disabilities, there are laws, laws uh, against uh, uh, women uh, when it comes to women, domestic violence, mm. all the gender-based violence. We need to actually, one more time, establish a law target, uh, based on politically targeted violence against women. Okay. If we can get that right, then we'll not begin to talk about implementation again. But like I said, implementation is the problem. Government should stop paying lip services to women development. They should quit paying lip services to gender-based violence. The governor's wives have a lot, ha have roles to play. They should sit up because they are, they could be victims too. That they are flying high today they do not mean that tomorrow uh, wouldn't be there. Wives of the governor should sit up and help and advocate for women's safety in their states. Wives of the governors, we, the men can't do it for us, and that is the truth. Mm. I love the fact that, you know, you just talked about governor's wives or, you know, even women in politics, because at the end of the day, they have a position. And when you have a position or a platform, um, whatever you say can be, you know, put into law or um, people respect yeah. that. So you expect that, you know, um, these women, the women who are the wives of governors and senators, they need to do a lot of advocacy. And so I'm a woman. I want to feel safe. And I'm sure uh, any woman, even in the village, in the little um, corner that she is, also wants to feel safe. So do you think that, you know, uh, um, our, politi our politicians, the wives, do you think they're doing a lot enough advocacy to ensure that the women, um, they know their rights, one, um, two, whatever laws that we have are being executed in case anyone, you know, falls short of it. And then um, three, you know, just ensure ensuring that we have a safe economy, um, a safe situation, or rather, um, for women? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I just mentioned governor's wives. I know many of them, some of them will say, uh, on an unconstitutional office, I think um, they need to look at the constitution and so that they can begin to give a mention to the offices of the governor's wives. Most of them have way more money than their husbands. Yeah, these mm -hmm. offices are unconventional. They are, not, they are not mentioned in the constitution. I think uh, there should be a, a constitutional process where they will be mentioned with some of the roles they are meant to be to play mm. mentioned there. So that way we can hold the wives of the governors responsible. Because right now we can't really hold them to anything. Mm. Um, they send to female politicians. But female politicians, we believe they should do more considering what they have also been through. Because a good number of them have been have been through a whole lot. So we are expecting them to to out of their own experience, uh, experience that many of us have to speak up for the coming generations. If they feel they have made the way for their own children, probably because of the constitution they are fight today, nobody knows tomorrow, like I tell them. So I think the wives of the governors, they are not telling enough. And I think it stems on the fact that they are quite offices that are, are strange to the laws. Mm -hmm. So if we can begin to uh, give that offices mentions in the constitution or bylaws or, or state laws, um, we can begin to hold them to something.
Mm. But beyond mentioning, of, mentioning that in the constitution and the laws of the state, I urge governor's wives to sit up for their fellow women. I urge them and I plead with them and I beg them to begin to look at women's safety. Um, most of them, their husbands do not construct roads. They don't put, they don't put street lights in the street lights, even in looks and crannies. Mm. Women get raped on daily. What are they mm. doing about it? When your husband has failed to do some of the things he has, he has to do, why not step in by ameliorating? You know? And another way they can do is by genuine empowerment of a woman. Like we said, we talked about the financial, uh, financially induced violence. So yeah. if they can begin to genuinely empower women, and an empowered woman is a powerful woman, you know, uh, there are things you cannot do to me, Francis. Because <laughs> I, I got some money myself. So I will take care of that. I like but, that. Yeah, but there are, yeah, but there are people who can take so many things. For example, a good number of women who returned to their violent husband was due to hunger. And yes. Poverty. They couldn't take care of their children. And they had to. And they would not come to you and say, ah, don't go back home. Go back you are. Ah, ah, because let me be managing it. And you just go back. But a powerful way and a powerful woman, you may say this man is violent. You bounce. You move. Mm. You get so you begin to you, from there begin to plan. So we think one of the ways is to generally empower women uh, financially, economically, mm. and the wives of governors, commissioners, commissioner for women affairs can do it. But then most often they're not in many states. Office of the commissioner for women affairs and that of special advisor are eroded <laughs> by that of the wives of the governors. So right. uh, that's why I'm there. I'm not calling on commissioners, wives commissioners for women affairs. No, I'm not calling on special advisors for women. I'm calling on governors' wives because most often they're not. They beat these drums at home. And mm -hmm. the Commissioner for Women Affairs and uh, maybe a special advisor of women or gender issues becomes redundant. Mm. Right. So Is they it... should genuinely sit up. Yes. They should genuinely sit up. They are enjoying today, nobody knows tomorrow. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, and then I was going to say it shouldn't even be limited to just. Um, you know, the governor's wives and you know, the female politicians. I think anyone in power mm. should, you know, just find a way to ensure that mm. the next woman is safe because it can come to your house. <laughs> it, it might be mm. them today, to you, it might be you tomorrow. So as long as you're in power, mm. as long as you have some form of platform, you should be able to mm. say, you know what, this is, this is a cause that I'm championing. This is a cause that I want, yes. you know, every woman to be safe. For instance, you know, yes. a man can walk um, down the road at about 11 p.m. and it's fine and no one is looking at him but when a woman is walking down the road you're not comfortable most times you're even you know looking behind you to be sure that you're safe so there is that anxiety that comes with it and we want a, a, a country that is safe for everyone and before I let you go I'm just going to ask one last question is um, do you think uh -huh. we need some form of international collaborations you know just to ensure that um, all of this advocacy these things that we're saying our voices are being heard and and then even for the men as well, um, do they need some form of education to know that they shouldn't be hitting women? There should be no gender-based violence. There should be no reason why you would want to make um, another woman unsafe in a country that is for everyone. Yes, um, of course. The, I, I think uh, we have concentrated so much uh, educating women on gender-based violence that we've not the men. Exactly. If we can begin to train women, men, begin to educate them, begin to reorientate them, let them understand that. These things are not right. These things, they could be your wife, they could be your mother, they could be your daughters, they could be your sisters, you know. Mm -hmm. I think more education should go into that many, into that uh, part, part of the society. They should, our, our, the other gender, like we call them, to begin to understand that um, a, a woman, a woman in his care should be safe. Right. You know, and um, if you do not want a woman, you let the woman go. You know, so, and then um, other issues, be it your staff, be it your sister, be mm -hmm. it a friend, be it a wife, a mother. I think hitting a woman, you should, that, that's why the laws are already there. Mm. But they do not implement them. Who will implement them? The men. A good number of the police are the, women, are the men. Right. Who would you go to? They are men. So these laws are there. Then international agencies, there have been a lot of international agencies working with other agencies here in Nigeria. But like I said, local locally based NGOs should begin to be truthful. When they get funds from the international agency, they should spend it right mm. All right. We want to say thank you for coming. It's been a wonderful conversation um, with you. Thank you for coming and, you know, just sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you very much. I'll see you some other time. Yes.
All right, that's Frances Olisa Ogbonaya. She's a broadcast journalist and women in leadership advocate. Um, we've just been talking about the safety of women in Nigeria, and this stems from the report that says um, Nigeria ranks 10th um, for women's safety in, in Africa. Anyways, this is our size of the show. This is where we have to wrap it up today. It's been amazing having a breakfast with you. I would see you again tomorrow. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing day.